focused on earnings numbers and a record on Wall Street. Well, there's at least 14 big name companies with their earnings numbers out today and uh, the moves in response to them have been equally as big. We've seen some very big moves on the market, but there's also that coming against the backdrop of a record session on Wall Street. The S&P and the Nasdaq both limped to new records off the back of some really high levels of central bank stimulus that's been pumped into the market since this coronavirus pandemic caused a massive sell-off. But starting with the banks, ANZ says it will pay an interim dividend of 25 cents a share fully franked. Its third quarter update shows net profit for the June quarter was more than $1.3 billion. The investor payout, meaning the dividend, is 46% of ANZ's first half statutory profit. So it's in line with the banking regulator's instruction for banks to retain at least half their earnings as a buffer against future COVID-19 related losses. Its competitor Westpac decided not to pay a dividend due to ongoing uncertainty during the pandemic. ANZ has also revealed it has 84,000 customers on mortgage repayment holidays or 9% of its home loan portfolio. The blood products maker CSL has recorded a 10% jump in annual net profit of 2.1 billion US dollars. CSL is helping the University of Queensland develop a COVID-19 vaccine and is also in talks with AstraZeneca to manufacture one being made in Oxford University in the UK here locally. Revenue rose 7% to 9 billion US dollars, but the biotech is expecting a softer 2021 as the COVID-19 pandemic impacts on plasma collection. It will pay a final dividend of 107 US cents a share unfranked. Casino operator Crown Resorts has seen its financial performance take a massive hit because of the coronavirus pandemic. Net profit was down 80% to $79.5 million. Revenue from Crown's Melbourne operations was down 31%. The company says 95% of its 11,500 employees have been stood down since the closure of most of its facilities in Melbourne in March and the brief closure of its Perth resorts. Well, as I said, there's been a fairly dramatic reaction on the market to today's results, some very big moves. Crown shares are on the rise despite that drop in profit. Investors have welcomed ANZ's decision to pay a dividend. Shares are up nearly 4%. CSL has seen a 7% bounce in its share price. It's trading near a three-month high. And Domino's has hit a record high after recording a fairly strong full-year profit. It reported its full-year profit lifted by 19% to $138 million and A2 Milk has seen its share price drop despite its profit lifting 34% on an underlying basis helped by a near doubling in infant nutrition sales in China. And lastly, WiseTech Global is the best performer on the top 200 list. Its shares have surged 34% after it saw a big boost in its net profit, though worth mentioning its underlying profit was flat. Well, as I said, there's those big moves on uh, in those uh, movers, but the healthcare sector and the tech sector are uh, helped by those record profits or record big profit numbers rather, are boosting the ASX and the All Lords, currently up nearly 1% each. Asian markets are pushing toward a seven-month high and record amounts of stimulus from the US Central Bank has underpinned record gains on Wall Street. Overnight, the S&P pushed past its February high to a new record, clawing back all the losses from the coronavirus sell-off now. That makes the bear market, which started in late February, the S&P shortest in its history. It was up just 0.2% to hit that record though and the Nasdaq rose 0.7% to reach its 18th record high since June. A quick check of commodities now and spot gold prices are giving back overnight gains. Crude oil prices slightly stronger and the Australian dollar reversing some of the ground it gained overnight but still holding well above that 72 US cent mark. Kirsten. Thanks Alicia. To the US now and Joe Biden has been officially nominated as the Democratic candidate to take on President Donald Trump in November. North America correspondent Catherine Diss has more from Washington.
Well, after months of primaries and caucuses right across the country, the Democratic Party has formally nominated Joe Biden as their presidential candidate. This was carried out by a virtual roll call right across the country on the second night of the party's national convention, which is being held completely online. Joe Biden reacted to the news live on air and while it was a scaled back version we got a little bit of a taste of the atmosphere that's usually experienced at these kinds of conventions. Let's take a listen. Thank you very very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all. It means the world to me and my family and I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also heard from former President Bill Clinton, who sought to contrast Joe Biden from the current president. He also departed from tradition of not criticising a sitting president and gave a fairly scathing review of how he thinks the Trump administration has handled the coronavirus pandemic. He said it didn't have to be this way, that the US didn't have to be leading the world on so many metrics, yet it was. Uh, he also um, he also called the White House a storm cell rather than the command centre that it should be and then pivoted towards Joe Biden and said how he was the man to unify the country and bridge some of those divides that have become just so apparent here over the past four years. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. At a time like this, the Oval Office should be a command centre. Instead, it's a storm centre. There's only chaos. Just one thing never changes, his determination to deny responsibility and shift the blame. The buck never stops there. Now you have to decide whether to renew his contract or hire someone else. If you want a president who defines the job as spending hours a day watching TV and zapping people on social media, he's your man. Our choice is Joe Biden. Up-and-coming Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or AOC as she's more commonly known, was given just one minute to make her case to the nation. Uh, she's from the liberal left wing of the party and is really seen as the protege of Bernie Sanders. Uh, she took a passionate yet solemn tone. She dropped some Spanish in there, which is seen as a way of appealing to Latino voters who are traditionally Democrat, yet they're very difficult to get out to the polling booths, so hopefully that will appeal to voters in Texas, uh, Florida, Arizona, which is areas where the president has been campaigning very hard. Uh, she also ended her one minute on air by endorsing Bernie Sanders rather than Joe Biden. And I suppose that's more of a symbolic tone, but it's a, uh, an indication of where she'd like to see the party go. And the night ended with a keynote speech from Jill Biden, who is the wife of Joe Biden, uh, who, was, who gave us a, a personal insight into why she thinks her husband should be the man to lead this country. Uh, the Democratic Party has certainly tried to paint Joe Biden as a caring, thoughtful man who uh, understands the common people and someone who has suffered enormous family tragedy. And that was certainly a tone that Jill Biden took tonight. Let's take a listen. Joe's purpose has always driven him forward. His strength of will is unstoppable and his faith is unshakable because it's not in politicians or political parties or even in himself. It's in the providence of God. His faith is in you, in us. So that was Jill Biden there striking a unifying tone, uh, trying to tell the nation that she thinks her husband, Joe Biden, is the man to bridge this very divided country back together. Our correspondent, Catherine Dis there. Let's check the national weather now with Graham Creed. And Graham, strong winds are causing some dust in western parts of New South Wales. Yes, raised dust once again being reported around Broken Hill through to Menindee and all the way north to around Wilcannia at the moment. In fact, if we look at the uh, satellite picture, we can see that area. It's pretty much under a severe weather warning for damaging winds at the moment, but this is the region that we are seeing that raised dust. It is showing up on the visual satellite picture, unfortunately, just not uh, a close enough quality here to be able to pick that dust up but it pretty much is in that area covered by the warning. Also strong winds impacting areas in the east of New South Wales. 
lots of showers around and over the coming days we're going to see some of that falling as more widespread snow. So let's have a look at a couple of the different states. Now for Tasmania, really is as we move into Friday, we start to see that snow becoming widespread. Most areas down to relatively low elevations will see it. It does start to clear though as we move into Saturday night and Sunday. Now Victoria doesn't miss out, particularly around uh, the western areas, looking at the potential of snow during Friday in towards the central ranges and it will be heavy right across the eastern ranges. Again, we start to see conditions easing off and back to alpine areas on Sunday. New South Wales doesn't miss out either as we move up the coast, widespread snow through the alpine areas. A little bit around the central tablelands to begin with, but overnight Friday and into Saturday morning, all the way through into the Hunter region and the northern tablelands, we could be seeing some fairly low level snow. Although about these far northern areas, it's not a great deal of moisture associated with it. Now, this is all due to a low pressure system that's moving towards Tasmania. It's sending a series of cold fronts across the southeastern states. That's why we're seeing these continuous showers, some cold air moving through, and it gets gradually colder over the coming days. It will also produce some widespread rainfall. So some good news for South Australia into Victoria, the southern ranges of New South Wales and also Tasmania. We'll also see another frontal system moving into Western Australia over the coming days. But tomorrow should be relatively clear across the west and much of the north. Again, it's that southeastern quarter of the nation looking at widespread showers, strong and gusty winds, and we'll see snow starting to become a little bit more widespread in the evening. You can keep up to date at news.abc.net.au and on iview. Here are the top stories on ABC News. The federal opposition is accusing the government of trying to mislead the public over its progress in securing a potential coronavirus vaccine. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison says a deal has been struck to access a treatment and we're going to interrupt that to now take you to Canberra where Dr Nick Coatsworth is giving...